Trenitalia is the state train operator in Italy, serving the entire country. Their fastest and best trains are called Frecce or Aero. Previously known as Eurostar Italia, they shuttle people between major cities at high speed. But now there's actually competition on the rails. What's it like to take Trenitalia's best service in standard, premium, and business class? And how does it compare with Italo? Well, we'll address the first part now, and stay tuned for the second comparison with Italo. Since they are so popular these days for some reason, let's think of Italian trains by Trenitalia in a tier list. F tier are the old regional trains with no air conditioning. Avoid these at all cost. Some routes, like Firenze to Siena, are notoriously bad. D tier are the newer regional trains. They come in single and double decker forms, and have air conditioning. Still, they are slow and often crowded with no reserved seats. C tier are the intercity trains. They are definitely showing their age, but they have reserved seats and are perfectly fine. B tier is the Freccia Bianca, which operate up to either 200 or 250 km per hour, depending on the unit. A tier is Freccia Argento, or Silver Arrow, that operate up to 250 km per hour. S tier is the Freccia Rosa, or Red Arrow, that operate up to 300 km per hour. The fastest of these trains are the Freccia Rosa 1000s. This flagship offering has four classes to choose from. In this video, I'll be reviewing three of them, Standard, Premium, and Business. There's a fourth class called Executiva, but it costs a stupid amount of extra money, and there's just one of me reviewing each class. I'm not a corporate franchise with something stuck in my teeth. Perhaps if some of the 97% of my viewers who are not subscribed just clicked that button, I could rationalize such splurges. The standard and premium legs were fairly quick trips, but I'll go into much more detail on the longer leg in business. Trenitalia tickets can be purchased on machines in the station or online. I'd recommend booking ahead of time in the summer, as several trains were completely sold out. All seats on the Freccia Rosa are reserved seats. Let's do this trip in chronological order, so we're starting with premium class, going from Parma to Modena. I headed to the designated platform, but the Italians love to not post the train on the platform itself until just before it arrives, which can cause some confusion. The scheduled time came and went, with no announcement or notice of a delay. And get used to it. I took eight trains on this trip to Italy, and all of them were late. Every. Single. One. Guess it's cause no angry speeches have been given from this balcony recently. For Trenitalia, premium means it's effectively the same as a standard seat, just with a beverage service and potentially some extra storage. Seats are still in a 2-2 configuration, except for a solo seat at the end of the car that I managed to snag. There's a trash can, but otherwise the seats are nothing special. There was no recline, and I didn't find the seat all that comfortable. We pulled out of the station 8 minutes late. Travel time was scheduled to be 25 minutes. On the route through Emilia Romana, the trains aren't really able to hit their top speeds. For a while, we only made it up to 142 kilometers, 88 miles per hour. 88 miles per hour! which isn't any faster than the intercities. Then we slowed to 15 miles per hour, then stopped. The maximum speed we reached was 162 kilometers per hour, or 100 miles per hour. After a quick stop in Reggio Emilia, we arrived in Modena 23 minutes late, making the 49 kilometer journey a 47 minute affair. There was no service at all during this time. After I disembarked, the train just closed the doors and sat there for a while, becoming even more delayed. You can probably guess what my thoughts are on premium class at this point, but let's move on to standard and business. The next day. I arrived at the Modena train station for my leg in standard to Bologna, and of course today the train was marked as 10 minutes late, though it was actually closer to 14. I only had a 20 minute connection in Bologna, so I was already getting a little nervous. The seats in Standard were the same as the premium ones. Journey time to Bologna was 26 minutes with no stops. I was sat with an Italian family in the quiet car. 
But this is Italy! How can you expect a family, or for that matter the rest of the car, to not be verbally expressive? Shut up! Shut up! We hit a top speed of 180 kilometers per hour, though most of the trip was closer to 100. Again, that's the limitation on this particular corridor. With nine minutes on the clock, I arrived in Bologna Centrale. This is where the fun begins. I had arrived in the upper part of the main station. However, the majority of the high-speed trains are in a new underground part of the station. So that's down a flight of stairs, under the whole station via an underpass, then down three escalators. I arrived at platform 19 just in time to see that my next train was also late. Only by eight minutes, but it was enough for me to make it. In the larger stations, digital signs indicate where each car will be, which is very convenient. Otherwise, there will be a notice that executive and business class are either in the front or the rear. Be aware that sometimes these signs are just not right. A few days prior in Bologna, the signs were totally wrong and there was a mad dash of people to their respective cars. This train was running from Udine all the way down to Napoli, though I was only going as far as Rome. Unlike premium and standard, business class is a real step up. The seats are in a 1-2 configuration, they recline, and they have both USB and full power. Still, I can't help but feel that they seem a bit dated. We left 8 minutes late, and travel time to Rome was 2 hours and 12 minutes. Right after leaving Bologna, there was a service. There was a choice of still or sparkling water, a choice of beverage, and either a salt or sweet snack. I got a pack of trail mix that was fine. On an earlier trip in business, there was a piece of focaccia. Both are nice gestures, but nothing memorable. The service was very rote, and there was no real customer interaction. There's free Wi-Fi for all passengers, which is great, though speeds were fairly slow. I also had some issues reconnecting to a different train after the first one. Most of the trip between Bologna and Florence is in a series of tunnels, and the train can really get up to speed. We quickly hit 251 km per hour before topping out at 295 km per hour, just shy of the listed operational speed of the Frecciarossa 1000's 300 km per hour. We made up a significant amount of time, pulling into Fidenza Santa Maria Novella in just 33 minutes. Fidenza, like Rome, is a terminal station, so the train changes direction as it pulls out the way it entered. As expected, the fairly empty business class car became completely full of American tourists leaving Florence headed to Rome with way, way too much luggage. The trip from Florence to Rome is above ground and quite scenic. We hit a top speed of about 243 kilometers per hour. After Florence, there was a second service, but only for people who recently boarded. It's a one and done sort of thing, apparently. I should also talk about the ride quality itself. In general, it was very smooth far more so than, say, the Acela. Yet another difference between Trenitalia and Italo, though, is the tilting of the train. Italo operates pendolino trains with active tilting. Some people find that it makes them sick, but I find that it makes the ride very smooth in turns. By contrast, the Frecciarossa does not have active tilting. We made up all the time, and arrived in Roma Tiburtina one hour and 15 minutes after Firenze. Remember, folks, that if you're a tourist, you want Roma Termini, not Tiburtina, so there's no need to panic thinking it's your stop. In fact, the train sits in Roma Termini for 20 minutes before changing directions again and continuing on to Napoli. So, Trenitalia's Frecciarossa. It's great. They run fast, are frequent, and high-speed trains should absolutely be your primary means of traveling around Italy. Which of the three classes is worth it? If it's not that much more, I'd say splurge for business, but standard is absolutely fine, especially if you're not traveling alone. I didn't feel as though premium had any sort of tangible benefit. But does that mean I'm crowning Trenitalia business class as the best high-speed rail experience in Italy? Well, no, for you see, there is another. And other than speed and route network, I found Italo to be better in nearly every way. So hit that like button and subscribe for more train and flight reviews, and I'll see you next time for Italo Premium and Business Class.